Hey, good evening, everybody. God bless you. Once again, declaring a very blessed and prosperous and healthy day and evening over you and your family. All right, so the title of tonight's message, going directly to or time to go directly to the source. Now, what does that mean? That's what we're going to talk about. All right, now this message is for everybody, certainly, but specifically it is for the body of Christ. Okay, and I'll explain that coming out of Ephesians chapter 4 and what it means, and especially right now, more than ever, all right, it is time to go directly to the source. So let's get started with a word of prayer, and then we'll get into it. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, as we come before you now, as we always do, first and foremost, to worship you, to praise you, to honor you, to truly thank you for our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus for the beautiful Holy Spirit who lives and dwells mightily on the inside of us, and for your word, Father, which is alive and full of power in our lives each and every day. I continue to thank you for open hearts and open minds, open eyes and open ears, Lord, that we would receive everything that you have for us right now, and as we always do, Father, to come before you together of one mind, of one accord, that we are unified in the faith, always by grace with the pure motive of love, and I just thank you, Lord. I thank you specifically right now as we live out each day here on this earth for your wisdom and instruction, Lord, your leading, your guiding, your empowerment for every thought, every word, every action we take. Father, we can see within the realm of this world system, we can see the walls beginning to crack. Father, we can see that this foundation, Father, of this world system is literally built on the sand. But I thank you that there is a foundation, there is a kingdom operating in this earth that is firmly established and founded on the rock. So Father, I thank you that we are on that rock, we are firmly established, and we will not be moved or shaken by any of the storms of life. And we thank you for it, in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so once again, the title of tonight's message, Time to Go Directly to the Source. All right, now you think about what's going on in this nation, what's going on in this world, um, you think about things like how we just, quote, came out of this pandemic, right? Now we're totally out of that, and just like that now we're focused on war, all right? You see uh, inflation, and I'm, 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 believe me, you know me, I'm always declaring, believing the best, speaking forth the best, but in the natural, once again, I see this getting a lot worse before it gets better. So you're talking inflation, higher prices, Lord knows what the next pandemic is gonna be, all right? You hear the powers that be already talking about that. And a lot of things going on in this world that are creating, in this country, that are creating uncertainty, instability, fear. And what, I'm, what a, one of my primary purposes of this message is that if we are still in a place where we're relying on man and just solely relying on this world system to get by, I believe right now more than ever, if that's where we're at, then we're in a lot of trouble, all right? Once again, I never underestimate the United States of America, but understanding my Bible, knowing the history of the Bible, and seeing all nations that had, had prospered at one time because they were close with God, and then they turned away from God. They started shedding the blood of their innocent. And not only have we not properly protected our children, but we have slaughtered millions and millions of children, the innocent blood that's been shed in this land, the perversion, uh, the, the desecration of the sanctity of marriage, all of these different things that literally I believe, and this didn't just take place yesterday or last week or last month. This is something that's been in play for many, 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 many years. And there comes a time where the patience of God runs out. And when that happens, that's when that protective wall comes down and the door is left open for the enemy. And what does he always come in? He comes in, he hits the health of the people, he hits finances, he brings in, there's an open door for wicked, corrupt leadership to come into place. All the stuff that you're seeing in this nation right now. And if the body of Christ doesn't step up and learn to go directly to the source himself, to really be part of the source that turns everything around, then I don't really see us coming out of this anytime soon and coming out of it in a good way, okay? Right now, without question, in this world system, 
We are on very, very shaky ground. What's going on in this country, what's going on in this world, and right now, if we don't understand, or maybe some of us just don't know what it means to go directly to the source, that's what we're going to talk about right now, because it is time to go directly to the source. Now, what do I mean by that? I'm just going to read three texts of scriptures tonight. I'm going to start Amplified Classic, King James. We'll start in the Amplified Classic, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Therefore then, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses who have borne testimony to the truth. Now he's talking about all the people in Hebrews chapter 11, all the great people of the Bible, great men and women of faith, people that trusted God, especially those who trusted God and operated in faith in the worst of the worst times. Because of these people, let us, because we're in the, in the presence of these people, let us strip off and throw aside every encumbrance. It says unnecessary weight and that sin which so readily, deftly, and cleverly clings to and entangles us, entangles us, and let us run with patient endurance and steady and active persistence the appointed course of the race that is set before us. Now that's very important, okay? One we know when it comes to sin, the enemy, the accuser of the brethren, how crafty, how manipulative, how deceitful he can be, and that there's many people caught up in this place where sin has to deftly and cleverly entangle them and it clings to them and they don't even realize that they're involved with it, okay? But it's instructing us to let us run with patient endurance and steady and active persistence the appointed course of the race that is set before us. And one of the primary things what he's talking about there is we walk by faith. It is a faith empowered by grace that we would specifically walk the walk that we have been called to and run the race that we are involved with. Verse two, ready? Looking away from all that will distract to Jesus, who is the leader and the source of our faith, giving the first incentive for our belief and is also its finisher, bringing it to maturity and perfection he, for the joy of obtaining the prize that was set before him, endured the cross, despising and ignoring the shame, and is now seated at the right hand of the throne of God. All right, so it specifically talks about Jesus as the source. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. Well, if you've been born again, you've accepted Christ, you've been given the measure of faith. How does that faith grow? How does that faith develop? Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And it is a faith, so when we operate in faith, when we believe the word of God and we then act upon it, when we act upon it by speaking or moving, it is at that point that we now activate the grace of God or the empowerment of the spirit of God within us, all right? But in order to do that, we have to understand how to go directly to the source himself to tap into that empowerment on a daily basis, amen? Now I wanna read this, and this is what I'm explaining here. Now when I talk about going directly to the source, I want you to think, now this is mainly for the body of Christ what I'm about to say here, okay? Um, I don't know of anybody that got born again, that accepted Christ and just immediately started reading their Bible two, three hours a day. There was a lot of times that, even including myself, that I had to have other people, all right, that God had chosen, that God had ordained to teach me, to train me, to minister to me, okay, even in the place of worship, you know, I'd go to a worship meeting and just love the music and love the atmosphere and all of those things are really, really, really good, okay? But we have to come to this place of maturity where we learn that we can go directly to the source ourself. Now I want to read this here and I'll explain what I mean. In Ephesians chapter 4, it talks about the gifts that were given to men, specifically the body of Christ. These are the five primary roles of leadership within the church, okay? Notice what he says here, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11, and he gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and some teachers. Why? For the perfecting of the saints, that's us, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, to build up the body of Christ. What's the purpose? Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, 
unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Ready? Verse 14, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Okay? See, if we're not going directly, to, if we haven't come to the point where we're going directly to the source ourselves, then we're going to set ourselves up to fall into this place where we can get blown hither and thither by every wind of doctrine because we haven't tapped directly into the source himself, the source of Christ Jesus within us, the source of truth to recognize, wait a minute, what I'm hearing right now, does this line up with the truth of God's word? Does this line up with what I have on the inside of my spirit right now? Because ultimately the job, me as a pastor, more so a teacher, okay, I'm definitely much more of a teacher than I am a pastor, but the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, the teacher, in training up and building up the body of Christ, ultimately, what's one of the primary goals? One of the primary goals is for the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, and the teacher. They've come to this place of leadership because they've learned how to go directly to the source themselves. They've gone to the teacher, the counselor, the guide. They're led, guided, empowered by the Spirit, and they bring forth the Word of God. They bring forth this, this atmosphere of worship, right? But what's the goal? The goal is that the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, and the teacher are positioned and submitted so that the Spirit of God is operating in and through them, ministering in and through them to the body to do what? To bring forth the Word of God, to help the saints build and develop the faith of Jesus Christ within them. But then we should get to the point Ultimately, where your faith is increased and developed to the point where you are now going directly to God for yourself. And those are the specific works that I want to talk about, okay, when I mean, what I mean by going directly to the source ourself. Well, first and foremost, I'm going to start going to the Word of God, listening to other teachings, reading other books. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you listen to those other teachings and you read those other books, ultimately, what's the goal? The goal is for those teachings and those books to build you up, to increase the faith of Christ within you, to motivate you, right? To ignite something within you that causes you to go to God directly for yourself to the word of God. It causes you to say, you know what? Instead of listening to this right now and hearing it, why don't I just start applying it? I can apply it through reading the word of God, meditating in the word of God, Instead of maybe sitting there listening to that teaching or just reading that book, you know what? I'm going to go out and, and, and apply this. I'm going to go out right now and I'm going to take a half hour or an hour to pray, to pray in the spirit. I'm going to take time right now to take a day or two or three and move into this realm of fasting. You know what? I'm going to go and I'm going to give of myself. I'm going to go and give of my time. I'm going to give of my talent. I'm going to give of my treasure because each time you do that, what are you doing? You're, you're applying, you're having faith in what God said to do. You got it from directly from the word of God, directly from the spirit of God. Now, the moment you decide to act on that faith is the moment you activated grace himself. Amen? So that's the point is that, yes, the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, and the teacher are absolutely necessary. 100%. It says it right here for the body of Christ, but their ultimate purpose is to build you up and get you to the point where you're going directly to the source yourself. And I really believe the primary ways you do that, one, I'm going to go directly to the Bible myself. I'm going to go to the Word of God myself. I'm not just going to read the Word of God. I'm going to do what it says to do, which is to meditate in this Word. Meaning when I read this book, and I find these promises that are alive and full of power, promises, scriptures that answer the problems and issues that are going on in this world, I'm going to get those promises and I'm going to get that word in the forefront of my thinking by meditating on it. I'm going to continue to pray on it. I'm going to learn how to pray in the spirit. I'm going to learn how to get into this realm of fasting. I'm going to learn how to be a giver. I'm going to learn how to give of myself, my time, my talent, my treasure. I am developing my faith in these things so that I'm not just a person that's listening and hearing, but now I've listened and heard to the point where I am now acting upon that which I have heard and that which I have believed. Amen? So what am I doing? You're tapping. Jesus is the author. He's the source. He's the finisher of that faith. So when I really start to move into that place, now all of a sudden, what am I learning to do? I'm tapping directly into the source himself. And what I'm saying is when you do that, now, no matter what's going on in this world out here, no matter how um, 
how much inflation all right, increases, how much prices go up, how crazy things get out, how many plagues or, 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 or pestilences try to come against us, man, you have gone to and are directly connected and at one with the source, and none of that stuff can touch you. Amen? Psalm 91, it clearly says, look, if you have made the Lord your refuge and the most high your dwelling place, you have tapped directly into the source, you have learned how to become one with the source, there shall no evil befall you, nor any plague or calamity come near your house. Well, it's one thing just to know that, but it's another thing to take that, to meditate on that, to continually declare and decree that over yourself and over your family. What are you doing? You're, 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 you're not just in that place of faith without works is dead. So you don't just believe it by faith. You are now acting upon it each and every day. And then you come to this point. I love this. This is 1 John 2, 27. I know I quote this and talk about it a lot, but listen to this instruction here. 1 John 2, 27. But as for you, the anointing or the manifestation of the presence of God in you, uh, which you have received from him, abides permanently in you. So then you have no need that anyone should instruct you. But just as his anointing teaches you concerning everything and is true and is no falsehood, so you must abide in, live in, never depart from him, the source, being rooted in him, knit to him, just as his anointing has taught you to do. So I'm not questioning there's people out there that have accepted Christ as Lord and Savior, right? But have they really learned within the spirit, the soul, and the physical body to go directly to the source, to experience that oneness with the source? Where it's not that God doesn't use other people that I can listen to or hear or, or be in a place of worship with or be encouraged. Absolutely, we need that. But you know what? No. Now, I am the one in that place. I am the one that God is using now to teach others to minister to others, to create these atmospheres of worship, to create that, these atmospheres where we can give and serve. Because when you're in that place, now what are you doing? You're in that place where both feet are firmly planted in this kingdom system. You're in the world, but not of the world. And it makes it very difficult for the things that are in this world system to affect you or disturb you or have any type of negative influence on you. But you can be right in the midst of it. But if you've connected to and have learned how to become one with the source, and once again, I believe it's through the word, meditation in the word, my brother Jeff put up here once again, fasting and prayer. I cannot express to you because a lot of the times what I've heard, I didn't grow up with church, and then you start talking about fasting and prayer, and like it's like people don't want to do it. It's like, well, you don't have to do that anymore. After all, we have grace. No, if you're really operating in the revelation and manifestation of grace, you will fast more and pray more than you've ever done before. You will give more than you've ever done before. And you're no longer doing it by discipline. It's just this desire. It's this prompting of grace himself on the inside of you that's instructing you and causing you to do it. What are you doing? You're being the light in the world. You're being the salt in the world. You're being the solution to all the problems that are out there. And that now more is needed than ever. And as I said it before, I say it again, according to Romans 5, 21, in this time of darkness, where the dark is getting darker, in God's system, the light is getting lighter, and his grace is super abounding. It's increasing and super abounding and surpassing the darkness and the sin and the fear that's out there. But that super abounding grace must be received by faith. And Jesus is the author, he is the source, and he is the finisher of our faith. And we have been called to not only connect with, but to really truly be at one with the source at all times. So Father, I just thank you for that now. I thank you now more than ever. It is time to go directly to the source. I thank you for apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers. But I thank you, Lord, that you are prompting each and every one of them to do their job to get the people to go directly to the source himself. So, Father, we just thank you for that, Lord, and I thank you for an awesome rest of the night for everybody and a great week coming up. And, Father, you have not given us a spirit of fear. You've given us a spirit of power and of love and of the sound mind. And I just thank you, Father, that no matter what's going on in this natural realm, that we are not moved, we are not disturbed, and we are not shaken by it in any way. So we thank you for it, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you, and have an awesome night.